Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time, we're looking at Whispering Chills, released for Fallout 4 and created by users Screaming Lake and Sweet Six Shooter. The version I've been playing on is version 4.0, released on the 11th of October 2022. You can check on the mod list Discord linked below for any changes and updates. Firstly, what is Whispering Chills? The description reads, Whispering Chills is a horror experience, unlike any other. It's intended to be entirely standalone in that you don't need to enjoy or know how to play Fallout 4 to be able to enjoy it as a horror fan. It's about as lore unfriendly as you can get, purely using the engine as a vessel to craft an entirely new experience through a unique combination of mods that enhance and rework its core mechanics and add new content that entirely changes its focus. Your ultimate goal and place in this housecape is for you to decide. If you're looking for something different in your modded experience, this is it. Whispering Chills is available to download from the Wabajack Modlist installer. While I won't cover the specifics of the installation in this video, the installation was explained clearly with a step-by-step -step guide on their website. And for further help with the download, you can follow along with my Wabajack Explanation Guide video on my channel and linked below. With around 180 mods, this list will take about 25 gigabytes to install. And once you get in game, there's a few mods you need to adjust through their menus, which again is explained on their website. Now for what the mod list adds. For this showcase, I'll be showing clips taken throughout my current playthrough. I've spent plenty of time with this list, and so I have a good grasp on what it's like to play. Although, I'll note that this list is clearly a huge overhaul, so I haven't had the chance to experience everything it offers. But yeah, I've played a good amount. It's always impressive to see just how drastically mods can change the game, and when it comes to vanilla Fallout 4 and Whispering Chills, it's a night and day difference. Quite literally. The Silent Hill vibes are strong, with mods like Grim and Whispering Hills, including new area lighting, new visual effects, and an increased number of fog weathers. Everything is darker and desaturated, and creates a tone like no other mod list I've played. And increasing the claustrophobia? There are mods like A Forest and Misty Pines Overhaul, which add in dense forests around the landscape and increase the amount of fog, truly upping the tension as you wonder what's hiding behind every tree. And for the landscape, the Vulcan landscape retexture has been included, which turns the whole world into a scorched earth, with ash, magma, and destruction all around. Also, I can't really show it on YouTube, but mutilated bodies have also been added around the map. Oh, and mannequins look like this now, because, you know, things weren't already scary enough, I guess. As for the EMB, it uses an EMB preset tailored specifically for this list. It emphasises the gloomy feel of everything and adds depth to the fog. And as a bonus, it doesn't seem to have a huge impact on performance, as compared to some other EMBs. Speaking of performance, this list ran really well for me, holding a consistent 60fps almost the entire time. Although of course in Boston the FPS lowers, but you know, that's just Fallout 4. And as for bugs, I honestly didn't encounter any. Now I'm sure with how big of an overhaul this is, that there's some to find, but yeah, it was all smooth for me. So while this list has the general Fallout 4 gunplay, looting and such, it's honestly best to treat this mod list as a new game. Two huge overhaul mods are included, that being Grim and Whispering Hills. These mods affect every aspect of the game, the tone, weapons, enemies, audio and more, so they'll be mentioned a few times throughout this video. You'll notice a difference from the very get-go, as you're thrown into this nightmarish world and must find a safe place before nightfall. Your character is cursed and will sometimes hallucinate, or even be dragged into hell at times. But I won't go into detail, as it's all fun to discover on your own, and you'll find out more through quests. And just overall, the sheer amount of new enemies completely changes how you traverse and survive the world. Another big overhaul comes from the immersive Fallout mod, which adds in a ton of features. But just to name a few, creatures will now move faster depending on their size and agility, and intimidate you a bit more before attacking. Movement for you and NPCs is much slower, with different types of weapons affecting mobility. 
Power armor is far slower and heavier. And finally, there's a bunch of combat changes, which I'll cover in the next section of this video. Fallout 4's leveling system has also been changed, with the mods Level Up Menu X and Be Exceptional adding in a leveling system closer to previous Fallout games. And the Humble Perks pack includes all new perks to unlock, each of which being balanced and tailored to more specific playstyles. The equipment and crafting overhaul has also been included, which adds in a new universal workbench so you can craft on the go. You can also use it to craft a campfire and place to sleep, which is highly encouraged. Plus it changes numerous other aspects of crafting, such as more options for modifying armors and weapons, new toggles for switching ammo types, legendary effects you can apply onto items, and more. Also, with the Sum Assembly Required mod, Power Armor is far more difficult to find in the world, and keeping it maintained requires a lot more resources, plus the list discourages the use of Power Armor in general. And finally, the mod No Radiation Redone removes all forms of radiation from the world, so there's at least one less thing to worry about. Overall, the gameplay requires you to move slowly through the landscape, being as careful as you can be, and you really have to weigh if going to look for loot is worth the preparation and risk. Combat is far more punishing, and every enemy of the world should be treated as a huge threat. Carrying over from the immersive Fallout mod, it makes recoil far more prominent, and something you'll actually need to control. Plus aiming down sights no longer zooms in the entire screen. On top of this, the mod Balance makes damage for you and humanoid enemies much more deadly if you're hit in the head or chest. And the manual reload mod means your gun will no longer reload automatically when out of ammo, and even adds the chance for your gun to jam upon firing. But by far the biggest change to combat comes from the enemy variety. At the start you'll see more traditional enemies about, such as zombies and skeletons. But at night, especially in dense forests, you'll come across some truly horrific monsters. And they're not all mindless beasts who charge at you, as some have unique attacks and movement patterns, that truly mess with your head. They all make it so reaching loot is a dangerous experience, and you'll constantly be encountering new enemies, where you're not quite sure what they're capable of. Honestly, there's just too many enemies to talk about, but discovering them all is a huge part of what makes this list great. In vanilla Fallout 4, you play a parent looking for their kidnapped child in the wasteland, in Whispering Chills, that child is long gone. All vanilla quest lines are missing, with many new horror based quests in their place. And most of the vanilla NPCs are tweaked or completely replaced by monsters. So yeah, it's about as far from the Fallout lore as you can get. The main quests come from Grim and Whispering Chills, which dive deeper into your character's curse and fleshes out the world. Plus some extra quest mods are added, such as Vault 1080 and Claustrophobia, all of which emphasising the horror aspect and providing some truly scary and well written quests. As for changes to the world space itself, besides the obvious, the mod Subway Runner and Stumble Upon Interiors add new underground places to explore and travel around. Plus a newer sewer system has been added, because what's a horror game without sewers? The names of numerous items have been tweaked to better fit the tone. For example, stim packs are now called health stims, and Nuka Cola is now just cola. But as for newly included stuff, a bunch of new weapons are added, all of which fit in the grim tone, such as crossbows, chainsaws, and deadly shotguns. And the same goes for armors, with Ellie's Armor Compendium and Private Military Company including survivalist looking clothing and more backpacks to store your gear. Audio is often one of the most important aspects of horror. If you watch a horror movie and cover your ears during a scary scene, it loses almost all of its impact, and so it was important that Whispering Chills gets it right, and it certainly does, as a huge amount of audio overhauls have been included. You can see from the list here, a ton of creepy sounds have been added, creating an eerie ambience no matter where you go. Plus hours of new music have been added, again fitting the horror genre. Have a listen to the audio for yourself.
some other notable changes with this list. Full UI provides the new and cleaner look for the HUD and UI. The no VATS overhaul disables the VATS system and replaces VATS related perks with something new. Immersive scrapping makes it so the amount of junk you get from scrapping items makes more sense. The Fall Souls mod makes it so the game doesn't pause when you enter menus, just to add another layer of tension. And finally, Fallout 4 photo mode has been added, meaning you can take fun photos to remember all the wholesome moments you've had. So I always include a section which talks about adding more mods to the list, but for this one I'm at a loss. It's just such a huge overhaul that anything I recommend could ruin the vibe or be incompatible with any of the huge mods. So yeah, if you choose to add anything horror related, just make sure you know what you're doing, and that's not the list author's problem to try and make it work for you. As someone who doesn't do well with horror, this list was damn scary to play through, which means it accomplished exactly what it set out to do. And honestly, I think it's the best kind of horror. It's not all about cheap jump scares and having to hide in closets to avoid every enemy. The horror comes from the vibe and overall tone of every aspect of the game. The feeling of wandering through a dark forest with a thick fog and hearing eerie sounds in the distance is already scary enough. But then you add in the fear of wanting to make it home with your newfound loot, and the paranoia of horrific monsters close by, and it all just comes together to make an impressively terrifying experience. I found it surprising how well the base canvas of Fallout 4 works in a horror setting. Quite often, a lot of horror games are reluctant to provide a level up system, or much progression in terms of your character, because you know, the idea of a character becoming more powerful in a horror setting can sometimes ruin the tone. Yet Whispering Chills manages this well, where there's still a satisfying sense of progression, but you never become too overpowered compared to the monsters, and everything feels earned. If you're a fan of horror games, Whispering Chills is definitely worth a go, even if you're not into Fallout 4 itself. And if you enjoy Fallout 4, but you're not sure if you should give this a go, honestly it's worth trying just to see how far Fallout 4 modding can be pushed. And it generally is one of the best horror games I've played. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow. I also have a Twitch where I play relaxing games every now and then, and a Discord if you want to talk about mod stuff or anything else. Other than that, big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Kowlin Branner, Over, Alec Bentley, Emperor Wolf, Jack Ma, Michael Eric, and Christian Howell. Thank you for supporting me over these spooky times. I never take it for granted, it honestly means so much, and thank you, thank you, and thank you. And I also have a coffee account if you want to give a little one-time donation. But uh, thank you everyone, and farewell!